Jericho, Yareach, Mon. Jericho, city of Mon. Apparently the ancient uh, uh, pagans, we're not sure who, that established Jericho, worshipped the false god of Mon. And that's why Jericho. Not far from here, there is another town called Qumran, on the right hand side, on the south. Kamer in Arabic also means moon. So the ancient people worship the moon over here. And we are about to get to our destination in about 10 15 minutes. By the way, Jericho. The first city that the children of Israel conquered when they entered the promised land. Let's see Mount Nebo for a moment. Straight ahead, the highest peak with the darker part. It's called Hapisga. You actually have uh, on the Smoky Mountains you have a mountain called Pisga, Hapisga. It means the summit. Here it is, the highest one over there. most humble person in the world, Moses, the greatest leader ever. Interesting that the great leader ever of Israel, the Bible tells us that he was the most humble man ever. And I cannot not compare to <laughs> every, every single modern thing. <laughs> every single. Um, here it is. You have Jaffa, Jerusalem, Jericho, Amman are on the same line, okay? Jaffa is the harbor of Jerusalem. And then you have Jerusalem, and then you have Jericho, and then you have Amman. All four of them are on the same crossroad that cross the country. So there is a comfortable way to go up and to climb up to Jerusalem from Jericho direction. Here it is, that's where we're heading. Another thing about Jericho, it's our strategic location because it controls the Jordan River fords. If you remember the story about Rahab and the spies, and again, this is such a great story. We have so much to learn from that. Why Joshua sent spies? Who told you to send spies? Didn't you learn from the first time you sent spies with Moses? You got stuck in the desert for 40 years for doing this foolishness, and now you send spies again? And what the spies are doing? Then they go to the local uh, brothel. Brothel. Might <laughs> make it nice. I told you it's a, it's a book for the whole family. But the Bible says over there they didn't stay there; they slept there. Yes. Anyway, and who's the righteous? Yeah. Rahab. Yeah, right. She quotes from the she quotes from the from the song of Miriam. <laughs> she she quotes it word by word. She knows better than Joshua. <laughs> anyway crazy story but remember what we have told to the spies she told them don't go back to the forest the men will look for you there go to the opposite side go to the mountains hide in the mountains wait till the men come back and then you can go that's how she saved them okay uh, anyway if you see those buildings right over there that's the Jordan River forts so the spies probably crossed the Jordan right there and uh, Okay, there is a big river that starts at Bethel, going for Jericho, and enter the Jordan River right over here. It's the largest canyon. It's called Kelt. Cut the story short, the Kelt River goes there into the Jordan River. So the Kelt River brought stones, pebbles, and uh, brought stones and paved the floor of the Jordan River. That's why it was possible to cross it. The rest of the Jordan is muddy, except here. Now, later, when the children of Israel crossed the Jordan River, the Bible tells us it was the day of harvest, just like now, when the snow melts and the Jordan River overflows. So very soon, we'll try to show you what area was overflowed by the Jordan River water when the children of Israel crossed it? 
because what you're about to see is just a tiny little creek but the Jordan River in the days of harvest when the snow melts was more than one kilometer wide and the Bible tells us yes don't think it was the days of harvest by the way the Jordan River oh my gosh so many things I didn't tell you yet the Jordan River if you look at the maps that all of you have in your hands You're going to follow the route of the Jordan River, but backwards. Okay, you just saw where the Jordan River ends. By the way, it's interesting that Jesus was baptized in the lowest place in the whole world. We mentioned the humility. Is that a coincidence? He was baptized in the lowest place in the world. And over here, the skies were open. So, the Jordan River ends at the Dead Sea, but it actually starts right here, by the foot of Mount Hermon, the highest mountain in Israel. You see where my finger is? The snow melts from Mount Hermon, seep through the ground, and you have a very large spring over here called the Spring of Den. And that's the beginning of the Jordan. Ah. Yarden means come down from Den or the river of Den okay so the Jordan that comes down from Den next to the city of Den that you're gonna visit God willing goes all the way enter the Sea of Galilee so the Sea of Galilee is technically a section it's a part of the Jordan River the Jordan River comes out from the southern corner of the Sea of Galilee and then continue for another 135 miles 130 miles until it ends at the Dead Sea, the lowest place in the world. Uh, Israel, 50 years ago, built a dam on the Sea of Galilee. So we use the Sea of Galilee as a water reservoir. Maybe now we have too much, we might have to open the dam after I don't know how many years they didn't open it. So we don't allow the water to go down the Jordan River anymore. And the Syrians, the Jordanians, the Palestinians are doing, and the Lebanese are also doing the same. So what I'm trying to tell you, that the Jordan River today receives less than 2% of the amount of water used to get at the biblical days. Biblical days? 50 times more all that because I'm trying uh, I know you're gonna be disappointed when you see it so uh, everybody expect expect the mighty Jordan uh, you know Chamberlain uh, he came here uh, 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 before he was when he was a minister of foreign colonies he came here just after the First World War and he saw the Jordan River he said what is that the Jordan River looks what a good PR can do for a place <laughs> size doesn't count okay what you see over there you see this green belt that goes all the way from the north to the south that's the area that used to be overflowed by the Jordan River we're gonna stop in a minute to try to take a good picture of it if you want to prepare your cameras yeah, yeah, that's that's a joke. That's the border between Israel and Jordan. Oh, okay. 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 Don't cr don't swim to the other side. <laughs> By the way, uh, okay, we need to talk about. Okay. 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 Okay, yeah. okay, now, if you look both to the left and to the right hand side, you will see those natural formations. Yes, you see the bright color? Those are natural formations and all the area, the flat area, the plateau in the center, that's the area that was used to be overfloated by the Jordan River. And like we said before, 
the Bible tells us, book of Joshua, that when the children of Israel crossed the Jordan River, it was the days of harvest, just like now. Yes, it's beginning of the harvest, the uh, barley harvest season. And when the snow melts on Mount Hermon and the Golan Heights, the Jordan River used to be overflow. So if you want to imagine the children of Israel, yes, now they got the Ark of the Covenant. They placed the 12 stones. And the moment that the feet of the priest touched the Jordan water, the Jordan River water split and stood on one side. And you can imagine them crossing from the far end to this end, one kilometer wide. 